Today, the Battle Arena will be host to two of the most dangerous creatures to ever appear in cinema history. On one end, a ferocious predator straight from hell, with an appetite so intense that its livelihood depends on the act of killing, eating, and repeating. Skull Island's Skull Crawler. On the other end, an agile and dangerous combatant brought to life by supernatural powers, half-human and half-monster, the Jaw Titan. In this battle, two different universes will cross over, bringing forth two battle-hardened combatants to fight in a bloody duel to the death. Taking into account agility, intelligence, weapons, and more to determine who survives and who dies. The rules are simple. No retreat, no prisoners, no mercy. Who will win? Find out at the end on Goji Center's Monster Face-Off. Before we enter the analysis platform, let's first make clear who exactly we'll be facing off today. Beginning with the skull crawlers, these animals come in all shapes and sizes, with some specimens seen to measure more than 40 feet to skull crawlers of titanic proportions. For this battle, we'll aim to use one of the smaller ones such as this juvenile skull crawler from Kong Skull Island. Jaw Titans come from the Attack on Titan cinematic universe, which features supernatural beings that take form as giant humans that can seemingly materialize out of thin air. These come in many shapes and forms, each with its own unique ability. Today, we'll use one from the Jaw Titan class to go up against the Skull Crawler, more specifically, one known as Porco Galliard. Now that we know who exactly is facing off in this battle, we are now ready to enter the analysis platform. Number 1. Mass The creature that wins the edge in this category will not only prove to have the greater mass, but also be the one who can use it to his advantage. Skullcrawler sizes are one of the most fluctuating of any of the larger predators in the MonsterVerse, so there is no exact set size for these. We are just given a range, which ended up being surpassed in GVK. As mentioned already, we'll stick with a juvenile specimen, but exactly how big and heavy is the one we're using in this scenario? Our Skullcrawler will be similar in height to its opponent, reaching heights of anywhere between 13 to 15 feet depending on its posture, and up to 50 feet in length fully extended. Fortunately, this puts it at around the size of a V-Rex, which was stated to be a little less than 17 tons. We can estimate the skull crawler size using these dimensions provided, assuming an average body density of 1400 kilograms per meter cubed, giving us a rough estimate of around 17.183 tons. Very close to the V-Rex, but perhaps a little heavier given the dinosaurs have a lighter body density than other reptiles of comparable size due to the hollow bones and air sacs. The result being a skull crawler of 17 to 18 US tons. So, how about this Jaw Titan? This Titan classification is the smallest out of the nine Titan forms. Being the smallest also means that this one is going to have crucial advantages that others don't have and some weaknesses that will be discussed later. Right now, we know that most of these Jaw Titans were 5 meters or a little more than 16 feet in height on average. However, the weight metric here can get a little wonky. It is mentioned that these Titans are a lot lighter lighter than they look. Additionally, we cannot assume that every Jaw Titan is the exact same weight, given that each Jaw Titan in history is slightly different and carries a different amount and arrangement of armor. The best we can do in this case is to use the square cubed law and scale up Porco Galliad, the Titan Shifter, up to this size. By scaling his exact dimensions to this height in this posture of 5 meters, we get a Titan that weighs 6,985.7 kilograms or 6.89 US tons. That looks a little heavier than expected, but considering that these guys are said to be lighter than they look, shaving off a bit of weight would be reasonable. And accounting for the armor mounted on this Jaw Titan, we are looking at a metric of anywhere between 4.5 to 5 tons. Either way, still nowhere near the estimated weight of our Skull Crawler. This may look as a disadvantage for this edge, but may be beneficial for the Jaw Titan in later categories. The Jaw Titan loses this category. For overall mass, the first edge will go to the skull crawler. Number 2, Armor. In terms of having a protective surface, the skull crawler does not have much to boast about. Upon looking at this animal, we find that there are absolutely no signs of any plate armor or any osteoderms fastened by any notably thick hide. 
We've seen in the past that this hide provides very little resistance against cuts from sharp bladed weapons. But what skull crawlers are known for is their levels of resilience. That's right, these guys will be able to soak up a lot of damage even if their skin gets lacerated many times. Even though this skin won't protect from cuts such as these, this animal will be able to withstand repeated exposure to very high temperatures and flame weaponry. This creature's dense musculature and rigid bone structure are enough to keep this guy functioning and viable for combat for an extended period of time. But why? In a few moments, we'll discuss an interesting attribute that keeps this animal going thanks to a strange hormonal state. But we aren't saying that all parts of the skull crawler are completely bare and unprotected. The most resistant part of this animal's body is its head. This thick skull secured the brain from very strong impacts such as heavy blows inflicted by boulders and was even used as a weapon of sorts when ramming, resistant enough to shatter ceratopsian frills. To prevent the brain from getting rattled, this animal's long, elastic tongue could have also aided here. Skull crawler tongues work similar to that of woodpeckers in that they are retractable. Once pulled back, these wrap around the brain, serving as a cushion to prevent getting damaged from any impacts, keeping the brain in operating state despite getting hit extremely hard. This isn't to say that skull crawlers have the same anatomy, but probably something similar to mitigate shocks to the brain. Not all Titan shifters are known for their armor. In fact, most of them are chiefly bare, some without skin for protection. However, Porco's version of the Jaw Titan does come with a neat feature in front of its skull, an armored face. This is made out of the same material known as Titan Crystals, a material unknown in the real world but most definitely many times tougher than bone, given that these can repel projectiles from many sorts of firearms. This armor is limited to just the front of the head and not the entirety of the cranium. The rest of the body will be susceptible to slashes, cuts, bites, and bruising. Therefore, it's possible that this titan in this fight will always aim to keep its face in front of the skull crawler to serve as a sort of shield to protect its vulnerable body. The best armor that this titan brings to its battle is in the form of agility, mostly relying on dodging rather than its protection on its face. To be fair, these titans are pretty resilient as well, often continuing fights after their whole limbs would be shot off and even staying conscious during impalement on its torso. Both of these creatures bring similar armor distributions and stand equal in terms of vulnerable surface area. Whether they are better at dodging hits is still up for debate. For now, both the Skullcrawler and Jaw Titan will stand at a draw when it comes to corporal armor. Now let's talk about which one of these two is more agile. Part 3 – Agility for an animal of this size, there is no doubt that the skull crawlers were adapted for making agile maneuvers in order to maximize their predatory potential. Being animals that always need to be eating and killing means that they should be able to move through all sorts of environments and capable of chasing down just about anything. The difference between this guy and its opponent is that this animal has only two limbs in contrast to the Jaw Titan who has four. The Jaw Titan will be able to take a quadrupedal stance thanks to its elongated arms that help not only give it better reach but also use its arms for locomotion. To aid the skull crawler in balance, it must heavily rely on its tail. Fortunately for this skull crawler, this is a prehensile body part, so it can be used as a limb as well, undulating on the ground side to side to provide stability, aiding in making sharp turns and used as a counterweight. The best example of this is when this animal was able to complete a 180 turn in less than a second thanks to the tail that was used as both a counterweight and a lethal weapon. As far as traveling on a plane or tunnels, this creature can be just as agile as any other animal. But once we enter tall, rugged terrain, we might have an issue when comparing it to the Jaw Titan. This Titan form is most agile when dashing through terrain on all fours. If there is one attribute the Jaw Titan is known for, it's agility. We already established that these Titans are lighter than you might expect. This Jaw Titan form takes it a step further with impressive leaping abilities, capable of leaping and staying on top of vertical surfaces aided by sharp sets of claws on the hands and feet. These help this Titan change directions in split seconds. Additionally, these long limbs help Jaw Titans swing through obstacles such as large trees, cliffs, and buildings. Complicated 
complicated maneuvers outside the capabilities of the Skullcrawler. Remember, the Jaw Titan category depends on its agility for defense, meaning that it will very likely dodge a good number of the Skullcrawler's attacks. Porco in particular was trained in shock combat, and therefore it was imperative to master this skill. Although both of the contestants are very agile and capable of turning agile maneuvers into attacks, we find that the Jaw Titan is notably superior at maneuvering in all axes, giving an extremely crucial edge to the Jaw Titan for agility. These locomotive attributes are still up for grabs as we head to number 4, Speed. The edge for speed will go to the combatant that can travel along a horizontal plane faster than the other. Beginning with the skull crawler, it's important to keep in mind that with this particular species, the younger the specimen, the faster it can move its legs to wind up speed. This was the case with the young skull crawler in Kong Skull Island, able to abruptly reach speeds that can cover dozens of meters in one second. The only limitation here is that the skull crawler has only two legs. Had this been a creature with four legs, it would have arguably moved a bit faster. This is compensated by the tail. Yes, this tail, apart from being a crucial aid in agility, could also aid in propulsion. If undulating, this tail would have aided in sifting through the ground, acting as a sort of propeller in flat terrain, pushing its body forward at a faster speed depending on the viscosity of the ground. Skull crawlers have the advantage of making longer strides since their legs are anatomically adapted to reach forward much further than another bipedal creature of similar size, even more than the Jaw Titan. Jaw Titans, however, are nowhere near being pushovers in this category. Out of the total of nine Titan shifters, this one is the fastest of them all. Not only moving fast, but also leveraging its high speeds to make its attacks more lethal. Additionally, this Jaw Titan on quadrupedal stance is the perfect example of why a four-legged creature in most cases is faster than a strictly bipedal animal. Four points making contact with the ground allow this Titan to spend less energy per limb to push its body in a horizontal axis. This goes even further. A Titan of this size moving at such alarming speeds will need some sort of adaptation to help control this speed and make sharp turns. An interesting and in this case helpful attribute of Jaw Titans is that most, if not all of them, are armed with sharp claws on all four appendages. Why is this important with speed? In the real world, cheetahs are the only felines that do not have retractable claws, one of the chief reasons why they are extremely fast runners. Instead of tucking them in, these claws help this animal have more traction with the ground, as a paw that does not grip the floor would slip slightly on a flat surface, making it waste energy with each stride. In contrast, claws that are exposed will grip the floor, preventing any of this said slipping, making use of 100% of the energy exerted in each stride, thus maximizing speed. For now, it's clear that the Jaw Titan maintains its reputation as being unrivaled in terms of combat speed, giving it another edge in this category. Number 5. Stamina one important factor that will determine who wins this edge is how these creatures are anatomically built. Admittedly, little is known about the internal anatomy of skull crawlers, but we are given some hints that can help us understand it better. The most popular fact about these animals is that they go through something known as hypervorism at all given times, meaning that these animals are never full and are wired to a state that they must always hunt. This could be due to several reasons such as hormonal imbalances in the stomach, stress, and a strangely fast digestive process thanks to its diet, meat. If it wasn't obvious already, this animal's feeding habits may be the reason why this animal wins or loses this edge. Let us explain. Carnivores have a more concentrated and easily digestible source of energy compared to herbivores. Animal tissues tend to be rich in protein and fat and have a high energy yield per unit of food consumed, allowing meat eaters to get a lot of energy per meal. This is why you see herbivores eat all the time, in contrast to carnivores eating once every few days at times. Skull crawlers, unfortunately, can't just rely on one meal every now and then. They need it all the time because they're stuck in an endless cycle of spending energy to digest food fast, having to replenish that energy hunting for food just so that they can use that energy to, you guessed it, digest more food. This miserable cycle brings stress on the animal, making this creature behave erratic at times when it spots something to eat, tiring it faster during a fight if it doesn't consume anything. 
But are the Titans victims of a weakness such as this? No, they are a bit strange. These types of Titans can materialize from thin air, and once their transformation is complete, they are known for having high internal temperatures, canceling out heat exhaustion, and also not having to eat anything. It is said that most of these Titans gain their energy from the sun, photosynthesizing similar to plants, explaining why pure Titans aren't that active during nighttime, for the most part. The Nine Titans are a bit different. Their supernatural forms don't require them to photosynthesize. They don't really breathe air despite having nostrils and a throat, and a strange ability to regenerate any body part. This is not limited to muscular tissue either, meaning that as these Titans move around, they will tire much slower over a long period of time with their constant regenerative ability healing their muscles as they are used. Having this self-regenerative ability would be the equivalent of a bodybuilder being capable of performing a few more reps on average thanks to their muscles recovering much faster. Similarly, in this fight, the smaller jaw titan will most likely recover faster from strenuous energy outputs, helping it fight for a longer time and winning a third edge in stamina, and keeping all three locomotive attributes. Number 6. Senses Winning this edge will not only help the combatants be aware of the opponent's whereabouts, but also help in potentially setting up an ambush against the opponent, or preventing it. Monarch's Skullcrawler dossier gives us some insight as to how good the Skullcrawler is at sensing other animals, or prey. Supposedly, it is mentioned that this creature has a very acute sense of smell, being particularly good at smelling blood from miles away. This sense of smell could be composed in one of two ways. Their nostrils could have provided passageways for air particles to make contact with their sinuses passing signals to the brain, or this tongue could have worked in tandem with a Jacobson's organ seen in snakes. Note that the skull crawlers share many similarities with these animals, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched to assume that this tongue could have picked up scent particles and scanned them under the equivalent of a Jacobson's organ. This is not official, but plausible. In terms of eyesight, we must consider that these are considered predominantly cave-dwelling creatures, explaining the reduced size of their eyes. Rather than just being guided solely by visible stimulus, these creatures also have organs enabling them to have heat vision, picking up temperature contrasts, expanding their scope of vision, and detecting any warm-blooded creature nearby, making ambushing this animal a bit more difficult. Or in this case, impossible, given that its opponent does have a pretty high internal temperature. During combat, however, this guy's eye orientation doesn't necessarily imply that it can perfectly see right in front of it, with a possible wide blind spot right in front of its face. This could easily be compensated with a head tilt, or again, just relying on its excellent heat sensors. Can this thing hear anything? There is not much info specifically detailing the level of auditory capacity of skull crawlers, but given that they are labeled as adept excavators, it's only reasonable to deduce that they are quite capable of picking up on slight vibrations on the ground. After all, it was mentioned that these were woken up by seismic charges, suggesting that they relied heavily on ground disturbance, further complicating any chances of ambushing this skull crawler. As far as these titans go, they have a little less amount of functional senses humans have, with humans having excellent forward-facing range of vision, capturing everything happening in front with outstanding depth perception. This is good for a titan that wants to hurl objects with precision if the need arises. Hearing, however, would have been another enhanced ability. Just because Porco's jaw titan does not have any visible ears does not mean that the hearing is bad. Larger hearing organs inside this titan would imply that it would have a greater capability than that of humans. So, who wins the edge? Both creatures have senses that can potentially outdo the opponent in different aspects, but one of these creatures is practically unambushable in this scenario, and most difficult to be taken by surprise. And that will be the Skull Crawler, the winner of this edge. Number 7. Intelligence Up next, we're going to discuss the most destructive weapons that these creatures have to bring to the fight. But first, we are going to analyze the brains behind the wielding of these weapons. In terms of intelligence, there is no official info stating how smart or dumb these skull crawlers can get. Therefore, we must rely on feats seen in the films or graphic novels. We do know that these animals can collaborate with each other to bring down dangerous prey and spend less energy bringing a large animal down. Swarm tactics were used when wiping out most of the great apes right before Kong was born. Due to this, we can safely assume that skull crawlers did have developed brains capable of strategizing. Once they are born, they immediately go hunting. 
There's not much that they are scared of on this island. And once they grow to adolescence, there are not many animals here that can put an end to it. This, over time, would cause the juvenile skull crawler to become reckless and underestimate opponents. Adults are more shrewd and mature, taking a step back to assess the situation before killing themselves in an attempt to eat something too powerful. These skull crawlers have some pretty sophisticated weaponry, such as prehensile tongues and tails used for strangling, meaning that these guys do have the capability of studying the weaknesses of its prey, identifying where the windpipe would be in a variety of different creatures, limbs, or anything that would be compromised using its array of weapons. The big drawback of these skull crawlers is that their voracious appetite and urgency to drop food in their stomachs would cause them to make decisions with haste, overlooking minor details that could end up costing them their lives. The only hard limiter of Titan intelligence is that of the Titan Shifter, which in this case are humans. Human intelligence is the sole culprit as to why Homo sapiens climbed to the very top of the food chain, second to none when it comes to strategizing, tool use, and complex communication. This sounds good for our Titan Shifter, but also note that there have been many recorded instances where humans have been outsmarted by seemingly less intelligent creatures and perished as a result. However, Titan Shifters are given an edge that might change everything. The process of passing down a Titan form is a rather gruesome procedure, where the inheritor must first turn into something known as a pure Titan, hardwired to eat other human beings. The Titan Shifter holding the power of one of the nine Titans will be willingly consumed by the pure Titan. Not only passing his or her powers down to the inheritor, but also memories. And this is not limited to lessons learned from the memories of all the past holders of this Titan. So, in our simulation, Porco Galliard, who is already an apt combatant, will also inherit the memories and perhaps some combat knowledge from the previous Titan shifters. But these memories do not override personal traits. That's right, being at this level of cognitive ability means that we must also account for other biological weaknesses present in the higher percentile of intelligent creatures. Emotions Porco Galliard was notorious for lacking patience and making rash decisions in the heat of the moment, trusting his ambushing ability a little too much and paying the price. In Paradis' attack on Marley, Porco was filled with rage upon learning that one of his comrades was eaten, and his titan was used to attack Marley. As a result, his rage-filled character made him recklessly attack the attack titan, making him prone to getting ambushed. In this situation, we will account for his short fuse. If he gets hit or outsmarted, he might become more reckless. In terms of recklessness, however, our Skullcrawler will already come in this state in the beginning of the fight, in contrast to Porco whose haphazard habits will only arise if triggered. For this reason, Porco's Jaw Titan will take the edge in this category. Now let's discuss weapons. Number 8. Bite Effectiveness Up next, we are about to discuss the business end of both of these monsters. Skullcrawler jaws look pretty self-explanatory, but there is more than meets the eye here. Apart from being able to open really wide, these skull crawlers do have the ability to unhinge their jaws to some degree to allow larger prey to come in, again similar to snakes. This is probably due to their hypervorous nature, helping them eat continuously and not be held back by a prey item that's too big. And yes, this now means that our jaw titan here is now officially part of the menu. The journey through this passageway is not pretty and doesn't feel good. By looking at the interior of Skullcrawler's jaws, we find that these are equipped with straight, cone-like, backwards-facing teeth. Apart from being pointed backwards, they are also pointed inward, as if they were all pointing directly at the throat. This is both good and bad in terms of bite force. Let's explain this a bit more. This animal's hypervorism is evident even in the way this animal eats. Remember, these things always need to be consuming food and fast. As a result, their jaws aren't really meant for chewing, cutting, or even crunching. Their only job is to make sure food goes inside their mouth as quickly and efficiently as possible, forcing the victim to slide in but not be able to crawl outwards because of the orientation of these teeth. The more the victim struggles to get out, the more it will damage itself, leaving chunks of meat, uh, food, behind for the skull crawler to eat, regardless of if the prey escapes or not. 
Most of the time, the prey will have no choice but to surrender and give in and accept its fate due to the difficulty of escaping. In turn, the skull crawler gets to eat quickly, and if the hunk of meat is too big, then the dislocating jaws will do the trick. This predominantly flat tooth arrangement will mitigate the bite force of this skull crawler, causing it to have less piercing power upon clamping its jaws. It's when it pulls its mandibles backwards where the real damage is done. This peculiar method of biting is seen when Ramorak repeatedly targets Kong's neck, trying to stick its teeth deep, thus ripping flesh from the neck. Not so much slitting, but ripping the throat. A monster labeled as a jaw titan will most likely have a set of deadly mandibles capable of dealing destructive damage. And Porco's jaw titan does not fall short of that description. These jaws are made of a material that can crack into practically anything, including this ultra-hardened titan crystal, with a breaking point many times harder than the hardest stone. Jaw titan mandibles and teeth vary with each titan shifter, with Porco's jaw titan having a double row of teeth. This outer row would actually mitigate the piercing power of these jaws because of their flat surface. Piercing strength in this case is not this jaw titan's virtue, it's the crushing power. Sure, these may not cut deep initially, but any flesh and tendons underneath would be severely bruised, crushed, and rendered useless if caught between these mandibles. Or worse, any prolonged grip to a skull or vertebrae would be fatal. So, who wins the edge? Both have sets of teeth that are equally important, each in their own method, but here the determining factor is the effectiveness of the bite on the opponent. In this case, we find that because of the Titan's regenerative ability, bites or damage inflicted by a skull crawler would eventually heal over some period of time, whereas the Jaw Titan's bite will be lethal if aimed at the right spot. This one is close, but for this battle, the Jaw Titan takes the edge for bite effectiveness. Number 9. Auxiliary Weapons Besides lethal bites, these two bring an additional set of weapons that could change the tide of battle. Skull crawlers are armed with four additional weapons and methods of attack. Beginning from the top, recall that the skull crawler's head is resistant enough not only to soak up damage, but inflict it. This ramming power is seen to be capable of shattering bone and leaving the skull crawler unscathed and unrattled. Using its feet as clawing weapons is only viable if it uses its tail for support to grip onto another entity, such as a larger creature or another large column like object. Here, the Jaw Titan is smaller than the Skull Crawler, so the use of these would be limited and harder to deploy. Remember that he's dealing with a very agile creature, so getting a hold of this Titan will be more difficult without a semi ranged weapon. Fortunately, the Skull Crawler is equipped with two prehensile weapons the tongue and tail. Fully extended, the Skull Crawler does have a much wider reach of attack than the Jaw Titan. This tongue aids the Skull Crawler to spend less energy reaching smaller targets, bringing it closer to its mouth instead of wasting more energy running to it. The tail is deceptively powerful as well. Another factor that will determine who wins the edge here will be strength. And it just so happens that skull crawlers as a whole are pretty powerful creatures, especially their tail. Lined with powerful muscle fibers that allow this creature to lift, strangle, and hurl heavy creatures at long distances. Adults are equipped with spiky barbs at the tips of their tails, making these many times more lethal. Our juvenile in this simulation has not developed these quite yet, so it will instead rely on its whip-like tip to inflict heavy blows. Previously, we discussed that jaw titans are typically equipped with sharp claws on the tips of their appendages. Because this animal moves quite fast, these creatures are also capable of rapidly slashing, violently shredding practically anything in front of them, leaving a gory mess, and easily exposing the vital organs of an unarmored opponent like this skull crawler. But that's as far as it goes with weapons found on this jaw titan's body. The rest is left to dexterity and supernatural phenomena. First, we must realize that this is still a dexterous humanoid monster with the capability of throwing objects at range or using makeshift weaponry. So, if there's anything laying around that can help the Jaw Titan in combat, it will most definitely make use of it. And finally, we must discuss that upon transformation, at least in the animated version of Attack on Titan, Titans tend to release superheated gas and emit small explosive force around the area of transformation. This could be weaponized in the event that the Jaw Titan needs to transform near the Skullcrawler. 
The opponent does prove to have some resistance against high temperatures such as this on the outer portions of its body. And because this animal has a total of four solid forms of auxiliary weaponry, the skull crawler will take the edge in this category. We are almost ready to throw these in the battle arena, but let's really quickly cover the weaknesses of these two monsters. Number 10. Weaknesses we already discussed that a major weakness of these two monsters is their lack of armor. But what else is there? One critically important factor to bring up regarding Titans is that they all share the same weakness, the nape. This is because upon transformation, the Titan Shifter will be attached to the central nervous system of the Titan. In this universe, that just so happens to be here. Because of this, these Titans can get injured practically anywhere and be able to regenerate over time except this spot, which is where the Titan Shifter is housed. A slice or injury 1 meter and 10 centimeters across would critically injure the nervous system of the Titan and the Titan Shifter underneath, causing it to potentially die instantly. A fatal injury to the Titan Shifter himself would also mean that it won't be able to transform again into a brand new Titan body. To prevent this injury, this jaw titan will have to constantly worry about the skull crawler's tendency to injure the neck of large creatures. Besides the thin skin that wraps around the skull crawler, these animals don't seem to have any other weaknesses due to their resiliency. Except one, blasts, which was the only force capable of dispatching this skull crawler seen here. Blasts cause concussive damage. Something like an explosion can create shockwaves that travel through the air that can exert significant pressure on nearby objects and in this case travel through the body of the unarmored skull crawler, damaging organs underneath. In this case, the combination of this blast and high heat compromised the heat-resistant skin of the skull crawler, causing it to succumb to lethal injuries. But this must be aimed directly at the torso. Additionally, the skull crawler does have a more robust body and stronger skeletal frame compared to the much lighter jaw titan. In this battle category, the skull crawler will take a close edge when it comes to weaknesses. X Factor both of these creatures are old enough to have witnessed death multiple times. Their victims would have been on the receiving end of some of the most devastating weapons the world has ever seen, inflicting tons of pain. It is here where both of these might have a psychological shock. Let us explain. Once again, skull crawlers are driven by the said hyperadrenalized state that requires them to kill all the time. But another side effect would have been increased pain tolerance. We witnessed skull crawlers get repeatedly injured time and time again without squirming too much. Upon witnessing an injured skull crawler ignore the injury and seemingly not scream in pain, this will cause confusion and perhaps a bit of panic to the opponent, causing something called demoralization to a highly emotional creature like a human. But this is also the case with the skull crawler. Titan shifters do not feel pain to the extent that humans do when they're inside their titan, losing entire limbs and not reacting the way they normally would if their actual arm was shot or ripped off. For a skull crawler, this will be extremely off-putting, causing a sense of confusion and potentially altering its initial strategy at the last minute. We are now ready to unleash the Jaw Titan and Skull Crawler to the battle arena in a fight to the death. The Skull Crawler, with its resilient serpentine build and powerful weapons, wins the edge in mass, senses, auxiliary weapons, and in being slightly less vulnerable. The Agile Jaw Titan goes full offensive, with winning the three locomotive attributes of agility, speed, and stamina, intelligence, and bite effectiveness. This simulation will take place on Skull Island terrain, where both the Jaw Titan and Skull Crawler can fight to full potential. There can only be one survivor. Only one will walk out of this alive. Coming up, Skull Crawler vs. Porco Galliard's Jaw Titan.
of this simulation bring forth the Jaw Titan as the winner of this fight. So, why did the Jaw Titan win? Upon checking on the key moments of a confrontation between both of these combatants, we find that the locomotive attributes and the Jaw Titan's exclusive supernatural ability to ignore pain and remain functioning were the key reasons why it came out as the victor. Given that the Skullcrawler has excellent senses, it was practically impossible to ambush the Skullcrawler, starting this confrontation with a head-on encounter. The Skullcrawler immediately spots the smaller opponent. He's hungry, so he wastes no time. The Skullcrawler is faster than he looks, but still not able to land a bite to the even more nimble Jaw Titan, who turns this evading maneuver into an attack. But the Skullcrawler is also fast, capable of getting a hold of the Jaw Titan's body, and with its immense strength slams him into the nearby rocky flat. This was a hard blow, but Porco inside remains unscathed. Time to assess what just happened. Porco buys himself some time and retreats to higher ground to figure this thing out. Amazed at this Skullcrawler's resilience, he now figures that he must not waste time and go for the two most vital organs. Time for round two. The Skullcrawler quickly reverses the Jaw Titan's incoming attack and uses its tongue to position the Jaw's head inside its mouth, shaking him violently but getting injured in the act. No big deal. The Skullcrawler proceeds to rip skin and flesh from this titan's arm. Food is food, and Porco gets filled with rage. Knowing that a frontal assault is more difficult, he now opts to attack from the side, dodging the Skullcrawler's charge and going berserk on this creature's back. But the crawler still doesn't want to die, and manages to knock the titan to the floor. In a last act, the jaw titan burrows deep into the insides of the skull crawler, while disabling the crawler's bottom jaw with its crunching bite. This is too much for the skull crawler, who succumbs to this rapid attack. Being able to move its limbs quickly also means that its clawing attack would inflict injuries at higher speeds, allowing the jaw titan's practically unbreakable weapons to easily carve into the skull crawler's vital organs. The haphazard nature of the Skullcrawler once again proves to be a detrimental factor in this fight, and the more astute and agile Jaw Titan proves that evasion can sometimes be the best defense. The Jaw Titan is one of the rare examples of where pure offense can sometimes win the day, not only giving it victory, but giving us one of the bloodiest crossover matchups in cinematic history. Special thanks to our team of researchers, animators, and artists that helped bring this episode to life. If you want to support the channel, know who will fight next, and get in on some cool behind the scenes, please join our YouTube memberships. For more info on these videos, go visit KojiCenter.com to view fun follow-up info on these fights.